Good morning, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. Welcome to our pre-market game plan for the major futures indices, gold and oil for today, Monday. It is August 21st and it is 8.44 a.m. Eastern Time and we're approaching the end of August. So uh, with that in mind, uh, please remember to adjust your trading to summer trading. You know what I have, what I I'm talking about have been talking about this for the whole month of August please use half the size and double the risk on all trades because we may experience turbulence in the market that means flurries either to the upside or the downside those topping tails those bottoming tails those are a sign of it usually support resistance levels are tested more into these uh, into the summer period keep in mind that the summer period is prolonged until the uh, until mid September uh, until the new earning season starts. All right, so uh, let's begin with the mini S&P 500 in which we had a trade, we had an active trade. Uh, and as you can see here, the overnight trading session pushed the price back lower into the 2419 area. We took profits at 2421st target area. And like I've mentioned, you should trail it very, very tight. So if you should have been Still in the trade, 2422 should have been uh, your exit point at the most, if not uh, 242150. Um, right now, if you're still in the trade, uh, because everybody's trading plan is different, keep in mind you should apply a hard stop at 24, uh, 24, uh, uh, 29 or 24, 28, 50. That would be a little tight, but that would be the new, your new stop and your new target should be, uh, as well, the 24, 20 area. We're doing an hourly sell at this point and we can actually look for a further continuation of, uh, uh, lower to the targets that we have mentioned uh, into our signal service um, and uh, actually we're looking for targets uh, so once again 2420 we're looking for targets into 2416 and perhaps on follow through into the 2410 area and 2408 2409 area we are seeing a lot of pressure at this point uh, we flurried above this prior uh, resistance high from the overnight trading session on Friday 24.34 and a quarter. Uh, we popped up a little bit 24.39 close to 40 area. Um, these are actually a lot of stops that were taken out for the weekend. So these were a, a lot of profits that were taken on the shorts, uh, the shorts that uh, were all the way into the 24.19. However, uh, like I've mentioned, there's a lot of pressure coming in here. The price was pushed back down once it crossed the uh, 2434 area. The price was pushed back down. These are levels that you need to know. Uh, these are support resistance levels, and we look at other support resistance levels other than uh, supply and demand. Those represent only about 30% of the equation. All right, so we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of pressure moving to the downside. However, if we break this high of twenty four thirty one, uh, we will poss possibly see a flurry to uh, twenty four thirty six. Price has indicated that it wants uh, to travel more to the downside uh, than uh, continue up. Nonetheless, it is a very sloppy range. We do have a double bottom at twenty four nineteen. And we do have a descending. Uh, we do have a descending top pattern here, which puts a, puts a lot of pressure on uh, on this uh, mini this morning. 24, uh, 24, 29 would be the break to the upside. A uh, possible watch between 24, uh, 29 and uh, 24, 31 for a possible break continuation higher into the 24, 34, 24, uh, 40 area. Um, we don't see a lot of, uh, I don't think we're going to get a lot of follow through on a day like today or even in a day like tomorrow. Um, um, the, uh, the economic calendar does not have a lot of uh, economic releases that may be conducive to a big swing. Uh, keep in mind that for the summer period, we should be looking more at scalps rather than swing trades or even day trades, uh, trend trades. All right, so that uh, concludes uh, M&E S. Let's move on to the M&E Dow. M&E Dow is uh, down about 20 points on the day. 
and uh, we are seeing a lot of pressure coming in under the 21,700 level. It is a great level. This is a shorting level uh, as it is right here from the hourly chart because we are trading into 21,700 is an area of minor resistance that is creating the selling pressure to uh, uh, bring the price back down into the 21,650. Uh, I would favor more uh, a trade in the m and Dow today uh, and into this morning. Also, on this level right here, this is Friday's uh, extended hour price action. You can see that we have uh, uh, bottomed out at 21,700, and right now we are topping out at 21,700, and that is putting a lot of pressure on price. So at this point, anything that would trade over 21,700 would be seen as mildly bullish possible scalp into the 21,750 area. Possible targets to the downside for the m and Dow. Uh, first target obviously uh, is going to be 21,630 area back into these lows. Uh, 21,600 is the next support level right here from a prior cluster, cluster on the daily chart and 21,543. Keep in mind that on the daily chart we are running into a lot of support here at 21,600, so that is going to be seen as an ultimate target. All right, so let's move on to the mini NASDAQ, and uh, NASDAQ is down one point and a quarter on the day, so not a lot down. It is one of the strongest minis. Uh, it is leading actually, it's not strong per chatter, uh, chart pattern wise, but it is strong on the day. You could see that we have uh, four close to five consecutive hours in which the price has been uh, continuing uh, higher. We have 10 more minutes for this bar to complete and a possible break about uh, above 5804, 5805 can bring more buying pressure that can take the price to the 5815 area, possibly 20 and possibly uh, 5828, let's say on a follow through. Um, a, a sell off this area, an hourly sell, um, and right now we see that the price has been for the first time in an extremely long time, I would say more than uh, a month and a half, actually a month and about uh, three weeks, we see the price that is ranging on the hourly chart within five points. So usually the case in NASDAQ has been uh, 20 to 25 points, so increased, increased risk. This is the reason why we have not had uh, so many trades in the m and NASDAQ. Um, a sell below 57.95 can bring more selling pressure to 57.80. We would use possibly a stop over uh, 58.05. That would be, uh, we would give it about a wiggle room of about two to three points because we do have the reward that would possibly sustain that 57.80. Area and then again, we will look for a next target into 5775, uh, the next target into 5768, and um. Keep in mind that we have that low at 5760 area, 57 uh, from the daily chart. So that would be our uh, ultimate target for it uh, for now. Um, and uh, possible follow through to the upside where it depends on how it reacts at the 20 uh, at the 58 uh, 5805 area. Uh, over 5805 area can have some sort of follow through all the way into the 58 15, 58 20, and possibly into this high 5830. All right, so let's move on to uh, gold. And uh, gold, let's just pop the chart up barely up on the day with two and a half points. You could see that the overnight price action took the price higher back into this interest area of 1295, which is a resistance area that is derived from these prior highs right here from Thursday and Friday. So a turnaround point may come at 1295. So if this is gonna, uh, if the price is gonna top off in this area, we may see a turnaround here that can possibly take the price back down to the following levels, 1292, 12. 
90 and back into the 1287. So far, we have an ascending pattern on the daily chart and a strong trend that has developed. We are still into that double top formation. Let's take the daily chart for a view double top from from this area but needless to say we're in a quadruple top situation here at 1297 if we break above the 1295 area we may assure some continuation that and we may get the price follow through to 1298 and 1300 once again and possibly into this peak of 1307 so gold remains bullish on our chart as long as it can trade over 1295. If it doesn't trade over 1295, we could possibly see a price reversal right here at the 1295 level. All right, let's take a look at oil and oil. Uh, keep in mind on Friday, um, um, on Friday, it had a huge move to the upside, uh, no news, and we did have a switch to the new contract on Friday, and we had an exhausting move to the upside, tested the 48.90 area, very close to the $49 area, coming very close to the 50 period moving average on the daily chart we're going to switch to the daily chart in just a second so you can see the bigger picture with it uh we're testing the support level right here we actually breached it by very little 48 40 48 for the low uh breaking to the downside just a little bit forming a new low 48 44 we've been looking at this double top formation possibly correction into the 4820 area so keep in mind a reversal i would be looking for a reversal if not to the 4820 area back into the 48 area we're seeing better pattern emerging out of oil we have not had really great patterns day trading patterns emerging out of oil not unless you have been trading really large time frames and you have been swinging it all right, so $48 would be seen as a new buy area, even the 48.20 area. So this interval here for about 20 cents will be seen as buyable. All right, so last but not least, let's take one last look at bonds. Bonds opened up and they're trading at 156.02 right now. Uh, they had a really nice rally to the upside continuing the uptrend with higher highs and higher lows at this point the overnight trading session though never challenged this prior high of 156.12 so if we get a break of 156.12 we have room to continue higher into 157.05 area so uh the only issue remains where would be a good entry on it well we're going to be looking for a pullback into the 155.28 area and even into the 155.22 area for a possible entry, we would be considering these lows as a possible stop area, the 155.15. Possible targets to the upside, like I said, we look, we're we looking for a, a maximum top off of 157 and 157.05 within that area so keep in mind pullbacks will be seen as buyable but please watch price action before that because if we see the price accelerating so don't just put an order for a buy because if we see the price accelerating into 155.24 area it might not possibly rotate so watch the price action as it behaves watch it pivot this is what we need to look for for a pivot so we need to see the price pivoting reversing before we see a possible continuation to uh, the upside so thank you so much uh, for tuning in guys for spending uh, 15 13 to 15 minutes with us this morning hope this uh, pre-market game plan is gonna come of use to you for the day. Hope you have a great rest of the week, profitable week and a profitable trading day. Keep in mind, we're gonna tone it down a little bit. The last two weeks of August are extremely difficult to trade. We're easing out of, uh, of earning season. We just have a few stocks that will be reporting earnings. And also we don't have economic releases that are possibly going to influence our trading. So 
trading may be extremely whippy uh there are a lot of traders that are taking the rest of the month off so keep that in mind all right thanks so much for tuning in guys see you for more trading ideas and trades in our private twitter feed for more product information visit our website tradeoutloud.com also we have a new class that will be starting next week on the 28th so uh visit tradeoutloud.com for slash futures for more information on that it is a six day class uh it is a power income day trading class uh you will be learning how to analyze the market and trade like we do all right thanks so much for tuning in guys have a great rest of the day profitable day that is okay see you on the other side